Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to a very important topic in cornea, corneal topography and corneal tomography, concepts and more. Just like we have the topography of the earth in which we have mountains, we have peaks, we have valleys, we have rivers, we have seas, which is all telling you about the surface of the earth which is called the topography of the earth. In a very similar manner, we have topography of the cornea, which will tell you about the surface of the cornea. So let us first understand what is the difference between topography and tomography. The term topography basically refers to the representation or the description of the surface characteristic of a structure. So if you have a circle like this or a ball, when you're describing the surface of this ball, you're talking about the topography. Similarly, when you're talking about the cornea, we know that cornea actually is a three dimensional structure. It has an anterior surface, it has a posterior surface and in between there is stroma. When we are talking just about the anterior surface of the cornea and talking about its elevations, depressions, its regularity and irregularity, but limiting us just to the anterior surface of the cornea, what we are discussing is the topography of the cornea. However, tomography is a process of generating two-dimensional cross-sectional images of a slice through a three-dimensional object. That means if we have a ball like this, which is a three-dimensional structure, now we are going to take a slice like this and then look at it at a 2D image. So this is called tomography. So for the uh, purpose of cornea, suppose this is a cornea which has an anterior surface and a posterior surface. When we take a slice through the surface of the cornea, we are able to see not just the anterior surface, but also the posterior surface. And we shall also be able to, to find out the thickness of the cornea by studying the anterior and posterior surfaces distances and subtracting them. So tomography will tell you one important parameter and that is pachymetry. So some people like to tell tomography as topography plus pachymetry and pachymetry is nothing but pachymetry study of the thickness of the cornea. So what are the various techniques of topography and tomography? There are basically three main techniques and they are in the order of their evolution as to how topography and tomography actually originated. The first technique that we have is the Placido disk based technique, which is basically giving us information regarding the topography of the cornea. And the example is the video keratoscope. The second technology is the slit scanning system. Example is the op scan. And the third technology is the seam flux imaging. And the advantage, uh, sorry, the example is the Pentacam, Sirius, and the Galilei. Now, the Placido disk based technology will give us basically the topography of the cornea. However, the remaining two, that is the scanning slit and the seam flux imaging, will give us the tomography of the cornea and therefore the last two ones that is a, sh a slit scanning and the sheen flux they are the more advanced techniques now let us have a look at each of them and understand their concept one at a time the first technology that we have is the placido imaging technology which is the oldest technology when we talk about topography and tomography. Now, this Placido imaging technology is actually a reflective technology. So what I mean to say is that in Placido imaging, we have a device like this, okay, or the video keratoscope is going to have a device like this, which will have concentric rings of light bands and dark bands so you can see there are white bands and dark bands which are present and this instrument is going to reflect this these rings onto the cornea as shown over here right now the image processing software is going to analyze the distance of these rings on the reflection of the cornea and deduce the anterior surface of the cornea and will make deductions about the anterior surface of the cornea now 
Now the question is how does the software get to know by studying these concentric rings about the anterior surface of the cornea? The answer lies in these rings. So the software is going to study the distance between these rings. Wherever the distance between the rings is less, what I mean to say is wherever the distance between the rings is less, that is the rings are more crowded, that part of the cornea is steeper. And wherever the distance is more, that part of the cornea is flatter or less curved. So using the mathematical algorithms, the software is going to convert that spacing between the rings and dimensions to generate the map and these maps are going to tell you about the anterior surface of the cornea. Now the Placido imaging has certain advantages and disadvantages. Now the advantage is that it will give you a very accurate measurement of the anterior surface of the cornea and in uh, to be more specific it is the anterior curvature of the cornea okay. However the disadvantage is that all these reflections are actually getting reflected from the tear film. So in patients who do not have a good tear film, you might have distorted myers and those distorted myers will not give you correct information about the anterior surface of the cornea. So this was about the Placido disc technology. Now next because of the disadvantages of the Placido disc and because it is measuring only the anterior surface and the anterior curvature of the cornea giving us the anterior curvature map which is also called the axial map now we want something which gives us more posterior details so there we have the next technology which is the scanning slit technology now in scanning slit uh, technology which is also called the scanning slit elevation technology multiple complementary slits will be used and they will perform the assessment of the corneal surface now the example of scanning slit is actually the op scan and in op scan about 40 slits are projected you know 20 slits are projected from the nasal side and 20 slits will be projected from the uh, from the temporal slide so you can see this is a projector it will be constantly forming slits from both the side and evaluating the surface of the cornea right so on total we are evaluating about 240 points on each slit so just imagine that we have total about 40 slits and per slit we are actually scanning 240 points so it's quite an extensive study of the anterior curvature posterior curvature and at the same time we are also going to get the pachymetry that is the thickness of the cornea now we have the third concept which is the sheem flux principle based assessment or the sheem flux technology for the tomography now in order to understand the sheem flux or the sheem flux imaging it is a little bit tricky so let me try to explain it to you now in conventional photography what happens is that whenever we have a camera like this okay so this is a camera the plane of the camera will always be parallel to the plane of the lens and this will be plane uh, will be parallel to the plane of the target where we're taking suppose this is a man who's taking a camera okay so his lens and his image they will all be parallel to each other right and that is how we are going to get a very good imaging however what happens in cornea is that the cornea is not a planar surface okay so cornea is basically non-planar so if cornea is non-planar you can have problems with the focusing of the cornea so let us have a look at this picture a in this a you can see ideally this is the object plane this is lens plane and this is the image plane all three are actually parallel to each other and since they are parallel to each other the image that we'll get will be a very good image however at certain points on the cornea because cornea is not a plane surface we there might be a problem that the object lens and image plane might be non-parallel to each other so in that uh, point the sh uh, the shine flux intersection will come into play so in shine flux technology whenever there is such a uh, such a tilt because of the non planar uh, surface what will happen is the the technology is also going to tilt this lens okay and it is going to tilt the lens in such a way that the lens plane and the object plane and the image plane will now be intersecting at one point and now because we have one single point of intersection we are going to get a good 
imaging and this is called the shine flux technology how the shine flux technology is going to take cross sections by tilting the lens plane and bringing all the three points on a single focus and takes uh, intersect uh, takes cross sections throughout the cornea and will give us a tomogram now here also you will get the anterior surface the posterior surface of the cornea along with that you will get the thickness of the cornea at the same time we are going to see also the anterior chamber depth the details of the lens also sometimes can be find out now in all of these the most extensive software was of the shine flux camera or the shine flux technology that was present in your pentacam and galilei and sirius therefore there are a lot of advantages of this shine flux camera or shine flux technology so let us see what are those advantages not just will it tell you about the anterior curvature of the cornea and what is the anterior curvature it is nothing but the topography okay just the anterior part of the cornea it will also tell you about the corneal thickness okay it tells you about the thickness now it will also tell you about the anterior chamber depth that is that is you are going behind the cornea and in between the cornea and the lens you have the anterior chamber and that anterior chamber depth also can be assessed using the shine flux technology or the pentacam and where is it useful it is basically useful in icl that is intraocular lens where we are putting a lens is within the where we are putting the lens on the pre-existing lens and in such cases it is very important to know the anterior chamber depth and that measurement can be found out using the shine flux technology based topo uh, topograph to tomographers now along with that we will also get an anterior and posterior float now in i will be explaining to you what is anterior or posterior float in my next video on topography and tomography that is the part 2 but here for the sake of this video let me tell you that the anterior curvature and the posterior uh, curvature of the cornea can also be measured using the shine flux camera however these are not simple calculation as the anterior curvature calculation they are based on the uh, principle of elevation data so let me tell you what is elevation data in my next video so for this video just remember that shine flux camera will help you to detect the anterior and posterior float also and give you information about the posterior curvature of the cornea as well now this posterior curvature is very important because we know that in certain conditions like early keratoconus only the posterior part of the cornea will be affected first now one more function which the tomographer or topography has and specifically the shine flux technology has is the densitometry function this densitometry function is nothing but it will tell you regarding the density of the cornea and in a way it will tell you about the clarity of the cornea and the lens so usually the densitometry function should be less than 30 because it tells you that the cornea is not that opaque and the cornea is actually clear whenever the densitometry function is more than 30 it usually indicates that there is a corneal opacity or a uh, vice versa you can see that in corneal opacity usually the densitometry function will be more now let us talk about the clinical uses of corneal topography or tomography the first very important use of corneal topography or tomography is screening for corneal ectasia when i talk about corneal ectasia i am talking about the most common that is keratoconus other ectasias like the pellucid margin degeneration or terian's margin degeneration keratoglobus okay and sometimes they will also some patients will also have post lasik ectasia so ectasia is nothing but there is thinning of cornea and then that thinned out portion of the cornea will protrude forward so, or so that is called ectasia so keratu uh, the topography or tomography is very important in screening of the corneal ectasias number second is whenever the corneal ectasia has been diagnosed next corneal topography will be used for monitoring and also for deciding the treatment in patients who have progressive ectasias like progressive keratoconus the the decision to decide the decision to uh, undergo cross linking actually depends upon the progression and documentation on corneal tomography 
the third thing is refractive surgery screening and monitoring now we all know that whenever the patient will undergo refractive procedures usually the uh, surface and the shape of the cornea is changed to correct for the refractive errors like myopia and hyperopia so topography and tomography will actually help the surgeon to understand precisely how he needs to shape the cornea and at the same time also to rule out the corneal ectasias then similarly patients who undergo post penetrating keratoplasty they will have lots of sutures and sometimes they will have very uh, poor vision post surgery and that happens because of these sutures which can induce very severe type of astigmatism because of the pull on the cornea and for evaluation of such corneas also kerato uh, topography or tomography will be very useful now as we, as i told you that the placido disc Im uh, imaging or technology is specifically reflecting the myers of the tear film so ocular surface disorder evaluation can also be done using this so this was about the part 1 on corneal topography and tomography in my next video i shall be discussing the important pentacam maps which are present uh, in the tomography and explaining you their concept So this was about part 1 on topography and tomography if it was useful kindly share the knowledge thank you and have a nice day